Good morning, Joe. This morning, there's some new reporting on the $110 billion arms deal with Saudi Arabia. President Trump announced on his foreign trip a couple of weeks ago. According to the Brookings Institution, the deal is actually just, quote, a bunch of letters of interest or intent, more akin to proposals, they say, and a wish list that, quote, the Saudis will be interested in someday, contains no actual binding contracts. Many of the proposals have been on the table since the Obama administration. In addition, it is unclear if Saudi Arabia could afford the weapons package due to a fall in oil prices. In addition to payments the Saudis are still making to the U.S. for the $112 billion in arms, the Obama administration brokered. Echoing the Brookings report, NPR shows that $250 billion in commercial investment also announced at the time. Also, non-binding preliminary proposals and claims faulty accounting, including doubling the amount of one investment and adding one announced last October with the Japanese company SoftBank. The White House referred questions to the Pentagon on all of this. Let's bring in right now CNBC's Brian Sullivan. Sully, uh, walk us through this. Well, uh, listen, uh, it, it's you got to be careful. I'm not going to comment on the on the Brookings thing. I thought it was kind of an interesting piece they did, and I know everybody's jumping on it, but. I will say this, that anything to do with defense is an acronym salad. You've got to be careful because the way, you know, it's not that you just go buy tanks or a ship. What you do, they've got this huge process. You've got an LOR, letter of request. If that's accepted, you have an LOA, a letter of acceptance. Then about 72 other acronyms as it goes through all the security process. So I understand why people say, well, is that deal, quote, fake news? But at the same time, there's always going to be letters of intent. They don't necessarily sign contracts like we think of them if you go to buy a house or a car. Right. So, and, and the New York Times on May 20th, I think it was, did say that a lot of it was sort of already done in the Obama administration. So there is so. a deal in place. It's just that it hasn't been officially enacted, signed, and all those. I, I think you'd have to ask Lockheed Martins of the world. But, you know, the, even the companies talked about it at the time. So, I, you know, there's probably, it's probably somewhere in the middle. Joe? Yeah, but, but Mike Barnacle, this looks like more hype from Donald Trump and more hype from Donald Trump's administration, and the facts just don't bear it out. Well, I mean, clearly part of it was to enhance uh, the results of his trip, no matter whether the, the real, real results or not. I mean, the, the numbers are staggering. What's more staggering than the numbers that were announced is still the big number that the Saudis still owe us for equipment that we've already shipped over there or they've already ordered. They're behind in their payments, like me. Well, Joe, this, what upsets yeah. me about this is... I mean, granted, I'd be really happy if we aren't selling the Saudis a lot of more munitions so that they can continue their horrific civil war in Yemen and keep starving millions of children. But aside from that, it's the continuation of this foreign policy status quo is Saudi Arabia. I do not understand why we keep kissing up to the kingdom and Donald Trump is falling into the same trap that every other administration has without taking a look at, hey, what is really driving terror in the region? And I know that I'm part of a younger generation that, you know, spent time in Iraq, spent time in Afghanistan, and I talk to a lot of my peers and we there's a lot of anger among us that foreign policy makers refuse to accept this fundamental truth about the the root causes but of the, terror. You were so spot on, so spot on, that one of the key numbers that the president, President Trump, has forgotten, and a lot of people seem to have forgotten, is 15. 15 out of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. 15 out of 19. Well, you should never, uh, ever uh, forget uh, that. Well, I'll give another yeah, number. Course, I, I, uh, go ahead, Joe. It's your show. No, I was just saying, a president who's obsessed with terrorism, who's actually talking about passing executive orders uh, without going to State Department uh, lawyers and, and, and going through the proper channels. He's obsessed about everything else, but at least he doesn't bring that up. And I will tell you, regardless of, I mean, obviously, we need to have, have ties with Saudi Arabia, and we need to have, we have some great opportunities with the Sunni world, but Elise Jordan, I'm part of the younger generation myself, as you know, um, <laughs> Willie and I. Um, who are, are, are angry <laughs> at the United States picking sides that put, uh, that, that put us in the middle of Middle but, East factions. And right now, if you look what's happened over the past 24, 36 hours, Donald Trump has thrown us into the middle of a hot 
a diplomatic war in the Middle East. Well, it's just what this whole trip was so ill conceived to start out by kissing the ring of the Saudis. It, uh, you know, it set such a terrible precedent for how this administration's transactional foreign policy was going to proceed with an administration that, quite frankly, looks like they can be bought and sold on any given day. But I, I think I think bought and sold, Elise and Joe, is the right term here because let's step aside from the politics for a second and think about the economics of this. Forget about this one Saudi arms deal. Whatever the ultimate number comes out to be because like I said defense contracts can be changed can be canceled it's all done on letters etc if you sell this much stuff or whatever amount of stuff to the Saudis guess who is then going to buy more stuff Israel so then the other nations well, in the region yeah. have to bulk up economically so in some ways Joe it's a sort of catch me if you can race in terms of defense spending yeah, it certainly is. And of course, you look at the imagery coming out of Saudi Arabia, Willie, and then compare that to what an absolutely frosty reception uh, he gave our democratically elected allies that have been with us since June the 6th, 1944, and the Germans who were with us every step of the way from the Berlin blockade in 49 all the way through 1989. Uh, just the images. A picture paints a thousand words. And compare how he treats the Saudis with how he treats German leaders. And of course, there we are. Uh, they're doing filming for the next Avengers movie. Uh, but it's it is really it's jarring. It is, and we talked about it in real time. You know that speech he made in Saudi Arabia, where he said, "I am not here to lecture you." He explicitly said that. And then his speech before NATO, with all of our Western allies standing there looking at him at his side, he said, "You all, you better pay up." But this better is, pay your share, NATO. In fact, election. lecturing our allies. It's also oil yeah. nomics. Oil's a big part of this. We're selling of technology to the Saudis and oil too. That's a big deal. All right, Brian, stay with us. You've got some reporting as well on the president's pick announced on Twitter just this morning for the next FBI director. We'll bring in former FBI special agent Clint Watts with his take on the choice. Plus, thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.